We need to look at our third object type. We've done strings and arrays, and for our third one this week, we want to look at regular expressions. So once again, we have a built-in object that allows us to call various methods and um, a lot of similarities to what we've done with strings and uh, arrays. But I would say that regular expressions are their own subtopic. And I know that you've looked at regular expressions in earlier courses um, and you've, you run into them everywhere. So I would say to you that the there's tremendous value in you really learning how regular expressions work. When If you're going to go on and you're going to work in Python or Java or JavaScript or just any programming language, you're going to do shell scripting, you're going to uh, we use regular expressions everywhere. So as a programmer, you're constantly going to want to reach for regular expressions whenever you need to do some sort of pattern matching or you need to extract data and that data follows a, a pattern that you can identify and you can write a little, a little bit of uh, regular expression code to fix. So it's like a regular expressions are really sort of a mini programming language and they transcend a whole bunch of other larger programming languages. So regular expression engines are embedded into all sorts of languages, including, including JavaScript. So what I thought I would do is do a quick review and maybe touch up of some of the concepts that are common when we're working with regular expressions. And once again, I would encourage you to have a uh, a cheat sheet or the documentation handy, this stuff, you, you really just have to look it up uh, until it becomes ingrained and you've done it a million times. It's going to be one of those things that you just have to look up all the time and that's fine. So we will do, um, we'll do some examples. So a couple of quick things about how we make regular expressions in JavaScript. Uh, I'll just open up my console here again so we can do a little bit of work. So two ways to do it. So we talked about when we have a string, um, if I have a string, um, you know, s is equal to, uh, right? Or I could say let s2 is equal to new string. So I can either declare a string using this string literal format or I can use the string constructor because I'm creating an object, a string object, and so I can I can work with s and s2 the same way here. Same with arrays. If I say, um, you know, I have a list and the list is one, two, three, I could do it that way using an array literal. Or I could say uh, list two is equal to a new array. Uh, and, um, you know, defining my array and saying that I want to have one, two, three uh, as the elements in my array. So I can either, I can do both of these things the same way, using a literal syntax or using the constructor to instantiate a new version of this. Regular expressions are the same way. So I can say let um, regular expression is equal to, and the way that I define a literal, it's a little confusing because it looks like it's going to be a comment. So this would be a comment typically, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some text inside of the slashes, and that's going to create a regular expression. So this is a regular expression to match ABC. I can also do the you know new option and call the constructor. So I can say let our E2 is equal to a new regular expression. And I can pass in a string like this. So both of those methods work. So when you're choosing between the two of these, I would say that it's probably most common in all cases to use the literal notation. And with, reg <clears throat> with regular expressions, it's no different. You'll tend to use the literal notation in these slashes. The only time that I tend to use the new regular expression style is if I want to write a regular expression that includes some variable. So if I had, you know, name equals uh, Ted, and I wanted to, I wanted to write a regular expression that incorporated the value of name somehow, I might say let regular expression three equals new regular expression, and I might say hello plus name. 
So if I have some dynamic aspect of my regular expression, then I can build it up as a string like this so that, um, you know, it, it, this is the way that I would use it. But other than that, I, I don't know. I, I don't tend to use the new regular expression syntax when I'm trying to build these things. Um, another thing to note, when you're defining these things and you have a regular expression ABC, one of the other things you can do at the end is you can put in these, um, these flags. And there's a number of, you can look up the flags, we'll talk about them a little bit, but these flags let you specify how the regular expression is going to work. So for example, if you want your regular expression to be case insensitive, so if I was to define ABC and I put an I at the end of it like this, I'm saying this would work for capital ABC, lowercase ABC, et cetera. So I can, I can turn on or off certain features of the regular expression checking when I do this. I could specify that I want my regular expression to go over multiple lines, do a multi-line one. Or I could say that I want to do searches. I don't just want to find the first instance of something. I want to globally search through the whole string. So I want to I want to define my regular expression using the G flag, or I want to do case insensitive and I want to do the global flag, something like this. So you'll see these uh, flags get put on the end. Now, when I'm writing regular expressions, I find that they are something I have to, um, I just have to test them as I'm writing them. Like, it's very rare that I can sit down and just type out a regular expression. I mean, I've been doing them for forever and I'm very good at regular expressions and yet uh, I still have to, I have to think about it and I have to test. What about this? What about this? So I, I think that the best way to write regular expressions is using some kind of an interactive tool. So I'm gonna use, there's lots of them on the web and basically they all work in a similar way. I'm gonna use this third one here, regexpal which looks like this. Essentially what it's gonna allow me to do is write some text like this and then write a regular expression um, like this. And it will show me here if there's been a match. It will highlight this and if I, you know, if it does it live. So this is really nice because when you're trying to reason about how a regular expression should work, you can interactively build these things. And some of these tools are really sophisticated um, and they have a lot of debugging tools, like they'll show you exactly how things are being tested and um, it gives a, a more visual, a visual appearance. I'm gonna use a simpler tool just for our discussions today because I don't wanna get mired down in some of the aspects of these tools, I just wanna I want to uh, look at some of uh, you know the things we can do. Okay, so here's what I'll do. I'm gonna take you on a quick tour through all of these different things here, and we'll write a few regular expressions, and then I'll come back and show you how we take the regular expressions and use them in JavaScript. There are methods we can use on strings and regular expressions objects in order to do this. Uh, okay, so let's start off. So the first thing to note about a regular expression is that most characters match themselves. So if I do the letter T, you can see that the letter T is being matched a number of times in here, but it's not matching this first one because we don't have the I flag here. In my tool, if I were to turn on the ignore case flag, you can see that if that is there, then it does match or doesn't match. So you can decide. Does it matter to you if you have an uppercase T or a lowercase T, right? It may matter to you. I could match all of the I's that are in here, etc. And if you do multiple letters together, like is, you can see that I have is twice. So there's two different um, instances of this. And if I were to get rid of the global flag, you'll see that it only matches it the first time. So sometimes you wanna match all of the instances in the string, sometimes you wanna match only the first instance. Sometimes you wanna ignore case and sometimes you care about case. So you can decide how you're gonna write your regular expression based on that. So the first rule is most characters match themselves, but then there's a whole bunch of characters that have special meanings. So you can see back here in this list, we have a whole series of characters that are used and they have special meaning within regular expressions. 
And so we'll go through and we'll, we'll talk about these. But if you ever need to match one of these, so for example, I have a period right here. And if I wanted to match a period, I can't, I can't use a period because a period has a special meaning. Period means any character. And so you can see that because I put in a period, all of my string is matching, which isn't really what I mean to do. So what I have to do is I have to escape that character. So anytime you have a special character and you want to, you want to match that literal character and not use it as a special character, you're going to have to escape it. So you'll often see um, within the regular expression, you'll see this slash. And regular expressions can get hard to read because you end up with a lot of these slashes like this. Like imagine, for example, if I had something like HTTP colon slash slash uh, google.ca and I wanted to write a regular expression that looked for HTTP colon. So if I said HTTP, that part matches colon. And then I say slash slash, right? So really what I need to do is I need to escape those. I need to escape those slashes. And you can see here that it starts to read like it gets a little bit complicated as a result of it. But whenever you see that, whenever you see these, you know, okay, probably what's going on here is that we are escaping, escaping what's in there. Okay, so let's talk about some of these special characters. So the, the first one we said is um, the dot. So if I had, for example, I have dog like this. And I want to match, I also want to match dogs, but you know, it could be dog, it could be, um, it could, there could be a period at the end, there could be like, so I could have dog with a period, I could have um, dog with a space at the end, um, I could have dog and there's a round bracket at the end, etc. So one of the things I can do is I can say, the next character that comes up can be anything. So putting a dot is kind of like what you would think a star means. Like if you are, um, you know, if you're doing in your terminal, if I say star.txt, if I wanted to get all my files that end with .txt, in your head you often think of this asterisk or the star as meaning uh, any character. Well, that's what the dot means when I'm here. And so if I wanted to have dog followed by anything followed by a period, how would I do that? If I put another period, what does that mean? Well, nothing's matching here because um, I would have to have, like if I put a period here, that would work. How do I match that literal period? I have to escape it. So remember, if you see a dot, it means one character, any possible character. If you see slash dot, it means this is a literal period that we're trying to match when we go through. Okay, now um, what if I was interested in matching uh, dogs with an S or dog with a period at the end? Okay, so let's try that. So another thing I can do is instead of putting a dot, the dot tends to be more than you want to do. So um, you know, it's like trying to kill a fly with a shotgun. It works, but it's not, it's not the right tool for the job. It's too much. So we often use a dot as a way of saying, okay, give me absolutely anything. But usually you don't want absolutely anything. Often you want to restrict it to some range of things. Okay, so let's say, for example, that one of the things that we were going to allow is an S. So what we can do is we can use a set. We can, we can do a set of possible characters by putting them in square brackets. So I could say that one of the possibilities that I'm gonna allow is an S like this, okay? Um, let's say we're also gonna allow a G just for interest sake. So let's say I have another one here, D-O-G-G -G, like this. So you can see now that I'm matching some but not all of these all of these because the next character that we receive has to be one of the ones in the list here. I could also say that I'm interested in a period. Now there's an interesting thing that happens when you're inside these capture groups 
it's not actually necessary for you to escape this. So it will work. This is the one rare instance where you can put a period in it so, and it won't complain. It won't, um, it won't cause a problem here. But um, I'm saying that I wanna have DOG followed by a character that is from this list here, okay? So we can do this for all sorts of things. Like we might say, for example, we are interested in the next character being a vowel. So we say A, E, I, O, or U. It's gotta be a vowel that comes next. So none of these are matching. Whereas if I said D, O, G, E, it matches, right? And you can see that it's not matching the next character. And I thought we said we wanted to have a vowel. Well, when you do a cap, when you say that this is a set of characters that I wanna match, it means I want to match the next character, the next single character has to be one of the ones from this list right here, like this, okay? We could also say maybe we're interested as well in capitals. So maybe it's A, E, I, O, or U, or it's A, E, I, O, or U like this. All right, so let's see what happens if we do D, O, G, E. Okay, that works. So now we have regular expression, which is case sensitive. It takes into account the fact that some of these could be lowercase, some of these could be uppercase. When you're doing regular expressions, a really common thing that you wanna do is you want to match something, but then you wanna invert that match. So often it's easier to think about the opposite of something rather than doing it directly. So here's a good example. What if I wanted something which wasn't a vowel to come next? Think of all the things, think of every character that is not a vowel. How big is that set? Like, you, you know, if you start thinking about typing it out, it's enormous. Like, it, it's, it's all the numbers, it's all, it's every letter except for these few letters. It's things like commas and periods and like, it becomes ridiculous. There's no way you're gonna write that. But it's really easy for us to say, these are the list of vowels, right? Okay, so what if I wanted to reverse this or inverse this? What I can do is I can put a caret at the beginning of this list, and what this means is this says everything that is not in this list. So the next character can be anything that isn't one of these. So when you're looking at these character sets, if it doesn't have a caret at the beginning, it means one of the characters in this set. And if it has this at the front, it means um, it has to be one of these things, right? Okay. Well, let's see, let's go further. What else can we do? Well, there are lots of things that are so common that we name them. Like, let's say, for example, that we wanted to have um, a, let's say, let's say we wanted to have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the next thing has to be one of these numbers. So we come along here and I do 3 and that works, or I come along here and I do 9 and that works, or here I put a 0 and that works. So we are defining a list of numbers, and obviously if we wanted to say not one of these, we would say, we would invert it, we would put the carrot at the beginning of this. But this gets long to type, or it gets even worse. What if I wanted to say, right? Like, this is ridiculous. And then you're like, okay, I got to do the uppercase versions. I got to do all of these letters. So there's lots of these where they're so common, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is so common that we have special ways of indicating it. So another way that I can write this is I can use what's what I can use slash D like this, and I can say that this is one of the digits. Okay? So it's a digit. And any time that you know, you think I'm gonna to have to write out all of those numbers, I would do this. And how do I do the opposite of a digit? Well, the opposite of a digit is to capitalize it. So if I say capital D slash capital D, then I get everything that is not one of the digits. 
So these are useful because if I put a D, it's a literal D, like match the D. But if I put slash D, I'm saying I want to match a digit. So at this point with digits, we could do some interesting things. Like for example, um, think about Seneca's phone number, which is 416-491-5050, like this. Whoops, 50, 50. That's Seneca's phone number. So if we wanted to write a regular expression to match that, we could say a digit, it has to be all digits, right? Or if we wanted to say the specific number of digits, we could say, all right, well, this has to be a digit followed by a digit followed by a digit, so that's the area code. And then digit, 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 that's the next three numbers, and then four more. One, two, three, four, like that. So we could write a regular expression that says we are expecting to get a, um, a number, and it has to be four characters plus three characters plus three characters. So there's a bunch of these um, classes like digits, we want to match any digit 0 to 9. Another one that's really common is we want to match um, we want to match something that looks like this. It's it, it's it's one of the letters A to Z. So another thing we can do here is instead of typing out A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever, we can say A to Z, all capital letters. We can say A to Z, lowercase letters. We can say 0 to 9, any digit. And we can say the underscore like that. So let's say, for example, that um, you know we want to make sure that this is a letter. So if I have A, that's a letter. But if I do something like the percent sign, it doesn't match. It's not one of those things. So this that you're seeing right here can also be written using slash W. So if I have A, A, you'll see that that matches. So when you see a slash W, it means A, a word character. A word character is defined as some alphanumeric, so A to Z, 0 to 9, uppercase or lowercase, and the underscore key. So this is really handy. Word characters might be used for, let's say, a username. You know, so you want to you want to have a username. A username can have uh, the letters A to Z, and it can have a number 0 to 9 or an underscore, and that will be okay. So that's what we're doing when we do slash w. So slash w allows us to get rid of all this. How would I do the opposite of a word character? Everything that isn't a word character would be capital W. Capital W would mean that I have things like the dollar sign would match or a, you know, a tilde would match, a comma would match. But if I do a or I do eight, those are all those are all not going to get caught by it. So again, when you see a lowercase w versus an uppercase w, this means any word character. This means any non-word character when it's going through it. Okay, another one that's really common is to say spaces. So sometimes what you want to match in a string is you want to match a space. So let's go back to that phone number for a second. 416 space 491 space 50 50. How would I write this regular expression? Well, one way I could do it is I could say that I have a digit followed by a digit followed by a digit and then what? Followed by a space. So I can put in a literal space if I want to. I can say this is a space. But there are other things besides spaces like for example you can have tab characters, so that's a tab character. Or you can have new line characters. There's all different types of what we call white space. So white space is not just the space key on the keyboard, it's a space or a tab. There's various ones that we can do. So we can say, instead of having, um, instead of having a space, we can say we want to have white space slash s. So the slash s is white space. So any space, tabs, or line breaks, we want to match on those. So after we do our space, we have three more digits. Three more digits like so, followed by slash s. So here I have a space, and here I have a tab. But you can see that it's matching both of them. And then I want to have four more digits. So I go up here and I say slash d, two, three, four, like this, and now I've matched my regular expression. 
So we can make this regular expression shorter and more concise, but the idea is there. We're matching digits and white space. We're defining our, we're defining what we're writing in terms of these. And you probably have already guessed it, but if I wanted to say, what is the inverse of white space? So I want to match for something that isn't a space. How would I do that? In that case, what I would do is I would capitalize it. I would flip it. And so capital S means not a white space, not a white space, any character which is not one of a space, a tab, or a line break versus S, which is white space. And if you are interested in matching specific characters, you can also escape them. So sometimes, for example, if I had, um, if I had a piece of text and I want to match a new line character, just like you would do if you were doing printf style um, strings and you want to say slash n, or if I wanted to match on Windows, the new line character is slash r slash n. So we have a carriage return and a new line. So we can use those literal characters when we're trying to match in order to um, in order to hit some of these special characters that you can't see. Okay, so so far what we've done is we've been able to say, um, let's go back and get our phone number here. So here's our phone number. Let's write the phone number two different ways. So here's a version of the phone number that has no spaces, and here's a version of the phone number that has spaces. So how would we write a regular expression that can deal with both? If you allow users to enter their phone number, lots of them are going to put spaces and lots of them are going to put no spaces. Um, so how would, we, how would we deal with this? Or what if we added another one? What if we said, what about this? So they put it in front of this one, but they don't put it. So we have, we have a number of different versions of this. Okay, so let's think about this. So we have a D, a D, and a D is the first three characters. And then we have some white space. Um, and we might even have someone who accidentally, um, well, no, let's keep it, let's, let's just do one at a time. So we have three digits, and then I want to say there is white space. But the problem is there isn't always white space. Like here, there's no white space. So I need a way to say to the regular expression engine, uh, there might be white space here, and there might not be white space here. How am I going to um, how am I going to indicate that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this character right here, this slash s, is optional. It may or may not appear. So if it appears, there'll be one. If it if it's there at all, and if it's not, if it if it isn't there, then just ignore it. So this is the same as saying three digits and a and a tab three digits and a space. So I should be able to do another version of this, which would be this, like, so if I said here I have a tab and here I have a tab like this, those would all work. Okay, let's think about what comes next. Well, next I have three digits. Three digits like so. And I have um, slash S and a question mark. Okay, that's good. And then I have four digits, one, two, three, four, like so. So that looks pretty good. We could also add support for another style that a lot of people do, which is they would write their phone number, whoops, like this. They might, they might put a, they might put a bracket, a round bracket around the area code like that. What do I have to do to add that to our regular expression? Well, I need to put around um, these around these three digits, I need to put my round brackets. So let's try that. So I put in a bracket and I put in a bracket, but it's not matching it. It's not matching it because the brackets have a special meaning. They're what we call a capture group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I want to have a literal bracket, and I want to have another literal bracket. So now this is matching the first one, but none of the other ones are matching. How do I say that this bracket is optional? Well, I go back and I say that this bracket may or may not be there. 
So the question mark goes to the right of whatever character, it, whatever it precedes, it precedes it is going to be the thing that is optional. So this one is optional and this one is optional. So now I have a regular expression that is starting to do a lot of work. It matches a whole bunch of different styles. Um, so, you know, and some people, could, they could write them even more ways. We could come up with more ways that would work here. So if we did this and we put in the parenthesis here like that, that would match. Um, you know, we could, every version you see here could also include the round parenthesis and that would be fine. So that's really interesting. Okay, what, let's, let's go a bit further. Uh, what else can we do? Well, another thing we can do is we can deal with there being, instead of saying that we just have an optional character, it's possible for us to, to say, in addition to it being optional, there could be multiple, ver multiple of these. So let's say, for example, that somebody writes their, their phone number like this. So they put two spaces in there and two and a bunch of spaces like this. And you say, nobody will ever do that. And, and I tell you the opposite, which is that users, if you allow people to type something in, people will copy and paste things from other places and it will have too many spaces or it'll look like this and it won't be the way you expect it to be. But we can make our regular expression handle this case, no problem. So what we have to do here is we have to say that this S right here, it's not that it's optional. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna say that in this case, the white space character, there could be zero of them, or there could be more than zero of them. So zero or more. So we could have zero, that's fine. We could have one, that's fine. We could have two, three, four, five. There could be any number of these. So I'm gonna change this from a question mark to an asterisk. I'm gonna say, this character here, this white space character, there could be many of them, like so. Over here, let's do the same thing here. Let's say that there could be many of them. So now this is really interesting because it's saying you might have one white space, you might have no white space, you might have multiple white space, right? That all matches, all of those are good. So that's, that's really helpful. Okay, what else could we, what else could we, could we, could we do in terms of the number that we do? So we now know how to do something. So we know that um, the question mark means it's optional. In other words, zero or one. We know that the star or the asterisk means zero or more. So we could have, a, we could have a thousand, we could have one, we could have one, we could have zero. And the other case that we care about is saying one or more. So if, if, it's, if it has to be there, it has to be there, then we put a plus sign instead of, um, instead of it. So if we wanted to, so for example, let's think about this. If I change this to a plus, what would it, if I said slash s plus and slash s plus, you can see what it does it now eliminates all the phone numbers that don't have these two spaces. So you have to have some amount of space for this to work. So when you're writing your regular expressions, you can decide for everything that you're matching, do I wanna have it be optional, question mark. Do I wanna have zero or more of them? Do I wanna have one or more of them? And this, uh, this question mark you can also use not only for a character, but you can use it for a group of characters. So here's, let's change this back again. Let's say that this is going to be zero or more asterisk, and this is going to be zero or more asterisk. What if we wanted to also support a phone number that looks like this, 491-5050, like that? In other words, how do I tell it that the area code is optional, right? Well, I still need this area code because this area code is um, used in a lot of these different ones here. But what I can do with all of these things here is instead of having it go before a character, like right now we're saying, you know, <clears throat> like, you know, having a, having a bracket is optional like this, 
if I have a bunch of characters and I put them inside of round parenthesis, it will do the same thing. So let's go up here and do this. Let's wrap from here all the way to the end of the space inside of a round parenthesis like this. Okay, so what I'm now doing is I'm saying this whole section here is a group. I've made what's called a capture group, and I'm going to put a question mark at the end of it. So I'm saying that it's optional to have the it's optional to have the the bit at the front. The it's optional to have the um, to have the area code. You can have it, but you don't have to have it. If you do have it, it can have brackets. It doesn't have to have brackets. And look at what we've done here. Here, I have a bracket that doesn't have an escape. Here, I have a bracket that does have an escape. What's the difference? This is how I do a literal bracket. I need this bracket to be matched. This is how I do a round bracket when I'm saying this is part of a capture group, and this capture group is optional, okay? So that's good. All right, there's another thing we can do. Instead of saying zero or more, sorry, zero or one, zero or more, one or more, another thing that you often want to do is you want to define exactly how many. So what you can do is you could say, for example, I want to have five. So exactly five. Or I want to have between five and seven. like so. I want to define how many times this thing occurs. So take a look at our take a look at our regular expression right now and see if you can see places where we are repeating ourselves. I mean, for example, we say I want to have one, two, three, four digits here. If I said it wouldn't make sense for me to say uh, plus if I said plus here, the problem with that is that people could put in more numbers and that wouldn't work. So I can't use a plus because a plus means too many. It would, it would work for four, but it would also work for five, six, seven, eight. What I would really like to be able to do is I would like to say there are exactly, there are exactly four digits. So this here means that the character that comes before this, this slash D, there are four of them. I can do the same thing over here. So I could get rid of these and I could say, instead of saying slash D slash D slash D, I could say there are three of them. And I could do the same thing here. There are three of them. So this regular expression is starting to get quite useful. I'm, I've got a lot of things going on here that are, that are exactly what, what I want. Um, I can specify one or more, I can specify exactly, I can specify digits, I can specify that things are optional, and it lets me accept and parse phone numbers in all different styles, um, which, is, which is really great, which is you know, really helpful for what I want to do. I could, I could modify this too using some of the things we talked about a minute ago. So instead of doing the white space, what if I said, for example, that I want to support a phone number that looks like this? What if I wanted to put a dash there? Or what if I wanted to put, I want to do this. I want to have a dash there. So those don't work because we're assuming that we're working with spaces. So how would I how would I do this if I wanted to um, here instead of saying slash s I could say I want to have a dash or a white space like this here I could say I want to have a uh, I want to have a dash I want to have a it has to be one or the others of these two I want to have a dash or a white space like this. And that's uh, working for some, but not, but not all of these. Um, I have a problem here because I have some that have more than one space, like this, is, this isn't working here. Um, so, and this, we need to say this is optional. 
this is optional because we might not have a space, we might not have a dash, and we still have to figure out how to deal with this. So we could say something like, here what I would need to do is I would need to say it needs to be this or this. So here we could change this and say this, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, we have any number, any number of the two of these. So lots of different, um, different ways of, uh, of, of approaching this. Um, the, I'm trying to think of other things that I want to quickly mention to you. I guess the other thing that I'll say is sometimes you want to, um, you want to anchor your, your search within a line. So for example, I might say that this, um, I might say that this has to be um, at the beginning of the uh, input string, or it. Ha let me give you a let me give you a simpler example um, down here. So when I'm saying um, if I put an this at the beginning, I'm saying. Um, Look from the beginning, and um, you can also say that you want to um, have. You can put the dollar sign at the end, which means match at the end. Match at the end of the at the end of the input string. So uh, let me just. I'll just copy and paste this down below so we don't lose it. And so if I had, for example, this is a sentence, it has a period at the end, like so. So if I wanted to match the period, right, I do a literal period. If I only want to match the, I'm going to turn off, um, I'm, if I only want to match the period at the end of the line or the end of the string, then I can use this dollar sign, and that means you know it has to be, it has to be at the end of the of the line or the end of the string. There, if I wanted to do the, if I wanted to anchor at the beginning, let's say I wanted to have at the beginning, um, let's say I have to have a capital letter, so I have to have A to Z at the beginning, and that does match. And if I change this and I said, you know, I put a space at the beginning, it no longer matches because it's not anchored to the front of the, not anchored to the front anymore. Okay, so this is, you know, this is a quick review of some of the things that we can do when we're working with regular expressions. And we've got some examples of them in here. And the only other thing I wanna to mention to you is just how you, how you use these when you're working in JavaScript. So we have a number of methods that we can call. I'll do them inside the console here and show you some examples. So if I have a string and I want to test to see if there's a match between this string. So let's say, for example, that I write a regular expression and my regular expression looks like this. So I have, um, I have a regular expression that says I have four digits and I want to do a test. I want to test to see if the following string A, B, C, D matches that. Well, I can specify my regular expressions and then I can call the dot test method like this. Dot test equals this, or I could say let digits only regular expression equals slash D four, like so. And then I could say digits only regular expression dot test one, two, three, four. And that gives me true. So the test is really useful when you have a string and you want to see does this string match what we're expecting. So for example, if I had my phone number here, let's just take this. And let's say let uh, here. I'll just put my phone number like so. So remember, if I if I want to define my regular expression, I have to put it in these slashes. If I want to test a phone number, four one six four nine one fifty fifty, that's true. If I put in spaces, is it still true? 
Yes, it's still true. If I put in dashes, does it still work? Yes, if I put in uh, parenthesis around this, does it still work? Yes, that still works. What if I um, don't have a final digit? No, that's false. That doesn't pass the test. So being able to take an input string and test and see, does this input string do what I want? Does it uh, follow the pattern that I expect, true or false? I can use regular expression.test. Another thing I can do is I can find all of the specific matches inside of a regular expression. And I can do that by saying, if I have a string like 416, 491, or 491, <laughs> let me try again, 491, 5050, and I say dot match, now I can put a regular expression in here, like so. I can say take this string and get me the matches that go with this regular expression here. And it's going to return back to you this special uh, object here that looks like this. So what it returns to me is it returns a match and it says, okay, I matched this string right here. And then it says, um, here are all of the individual groups that I match. So remember when we were defining our regular expression, Let's change this like so and multi-line. Here's our, our regular expression. Um, we put parenthesis around the area code like this. Whenever you put parenthesis around things, what you're doing is you're defining what's called a capture group. Uh, a capture group allows you to, have I missed a parenthesis here? No, it ends right here, sorry. Here's my capture group number one. So when you do a match, you can capture pieces of a regular expression, um, like so. Let's do another one. Let's say that I wanted to do an email address. So you have um, name at server.com or web222 at gmail.ca, et cetera, something like that. How would we write this regular expression? Well, um, we know that we would have to say, somehow we have, we have an at symbol, and then we have on either side of the at symbol, we have two things. So the first thing here, how would you define what this is? And how would you define what this is? Well, we could say um, it needs to be a letter or a number or an underscore. So we could say it's a word character. How many of them are there? Well, there are, there's at least one, but there could be more than one. So we'll use a plus sign followed by the at, the at sign. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll say there's a slash W and there is um, a plus, which kind of gets us where we want to go. So if we said it's a word character, or it could also be um, a dot, and there could be many of them, like this. Okay, so we have two sections to this. We have the front section here, and we have the back section here. And what if I capture both of those? So let's try doing something with this regular expression. I'm going to go back to my code over here and I'm going to say I have a string web222 at gmail.ca and what I want to do is I want to extract pieces of this. I want to extract, I want to first of all match the whole thing, right? And then I also want to capture the part at the front, so the username and I want to capture the domain, the server part here. So if I were to do this, I could say let uh, match parts equals, and then I'll do this expression. Okay, so match parts at one is the name. Match parts at two is the is the domain. So this is really powerful because now I can write code that can tear apart, it can look for a pattern, then it can pull pieces of those apart when I want to be able to do these matches. 
I can also use the strings replace method here. So if I have a string, uh, let's say for example, this is a string and it has spaces like this. And what if I said, I would like to replace all of those spaces with uh, underscores. So I could write a regular expression that says, I want to find every, I want to find what? Every space. So I could say, let's do, let's look for white space. And I want to look for every single piece of white space. I want to do a global uh, regular expression that's going to look through this string. And I want to replace this with the underscore character. And so it gives me back a string that has matched all of those uh, all of those white spaces. If I were to you know have more than one, so if I had two in here like this, it would give me two instead of instead of just having one. So that's kind of neat. And the last one that you'll you'll see us use is split. So if I had a list of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, like so. So take a look at this string. This string we could use, we could say I want to split on the comma, but that's kind of ugly. Do you see what's happened here? Sometimes I have a space like this, and sometimes I don't. So now my, my, my string that I've split up into pieces, it's got a space or not a space, which isn't what I want. So anytime you have a pattern, you don't have a literal thing, like not just a space, but you have a, a pattern of a space with a comma, we could rewrite this as a regular expression. So I'm gonna split it. I'm gonna write a regular expression. My regular expression is going to be, um, it's gonna be a comma followed by white space. And there could be, there could be zero or more white spaces. So I'm gonna say asterisk like this. And I split that and now I get this. So if Imagine if I did this, if there was a lot of space here and there was some space here, etc. how would that look? Okay, well that comes out really cleanly because instead of having a literal character that I'm doing a search for, I have a pattern that I'm searching for. So this pattern matching is really powerful for being able to find things, extract things, compare things. So it's really useful for you to put in the time to get get good at regular expressions. When you first start them, they're hard. Like if you go back here, if I give you this regular expression, right? If I paste this in here and you read this, you're like, I have no idea what this is. So regular expressions are easier to write than they are to read. So, you know, you have to be, you have to be patient with yourself when you're going through these, but take it slowly. Um, you can actually make headway with these things when you're trying to make sense of them. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. I want to do one last video this week, and that is I want to take all the things that we just talked about, and I want to write a program that uses them. I think um, it's, it's hard to understand this stuff unless you have a need for it. So I want to give you a need for it, and we'll try writing a program that uses it.